Where are you going to go, Gary? Ah, uh, we're going to go and see if we can find Bullwinkle. You'll probably hear him come through the brush or through the walking in a muskeg before you see one. Right. And call him in, like cowboy, you know? Mm. Really? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. I'm kind of an apprentice moose hunter. I don't know enough about them to say that one is better than the other. I think if you get one, you got a good one. Just make sure you get the right size of the horns, you know? It just isn't that easy to go out there and find a legal moose. You might see a half a dozen moose, and not one of them's legal. I just pumped 106 gallons of fuel in there. I'm going to gamble my fuel money that I'll get me a chunk of moose. The value of a moose, it's worth its weight in gold. You couldn't buy meat as good as this. You'll be gone for a few days, huh? Yeah, two or three days, maybe four. Well, don't take any unnecessary chances. Well, I'm just pulling out of poor protection here. I'm kind of leaving my lifeline behind there. Some people probably think I'm pretty foolish here to attempt going moose hunting by myself. Have a bad fall or something when you're out hunting like that, there's nobody going to be able to help me. Alone, Gary will pilot the Margaret T. North about 20 nautical miles to a small chain of islands known as Rocky Pass, using his vessel not only as transport, but also a campsite during his hunt. I'm getting up in my age here, and I don't really have too many more years to be able to even try to get a moose. So this is kind of the last chance for me to come up with the, the biggest critter there is. <laughs> 